Have you ever heard of a Waller drilling? Neither had I. Now, if you've been watching my channel for the past, it's been a couple of years now, you know that I specialize in Walthers. I've been collecting Walthers for almost 30 years. I thought I knew everything about Walthers, but I did get an email from a guy in Wisconsin. I've mentioned him before, Jim. Jim writes to me and says, would you be interested in a Walther drilling? I had to laugh to myself because I thought there's no such thing. So I wrote to him and said, there's no such thing. Uh, he then said, au contraire, and uh, showed me a picture that looked like this. And that drilling was on an auction. Actually, I believe it was Rock Island auction uh, quite a while ago. Uh, other than that one, I could not find any of them online. And I asked a couple Walder experts, have you ever heard of a Walder drilling? And everybody said they never made one. Now, we, all, we know they made handguns. They started out with small caliber handguns and worked their way up. Uh, later, uh, of course, the... Uh, G43, the G41, machine guns. Uh, so Walder made all kinds of guns, but they also made double barrel shotguns. And I've seen, I've seen plenty of double barrel shotguns. We've sold quite a few, but I've never heard of or ever seen a Walder drilling. So if you ask me, did they make one? I would answer, well, yes and no. And let me explain what I mean by that. So for the ultimate answer, I contacted uh, Dieter Marshall, who wrote this book on Walther pistols. Um, and he's, he does all the different variations. But I also know that for a while he worked for the Walther factory and was actually doing historical research on the history of the factory. And uh, I was involved in, in some conversations with him about Walther and all their products. So I decided, let's just go straight to Dieter. So of course, Dieter knew right off the top of his head and said, well, actually, they, uh, Walther didn't make it, but they subcontracted to an area uh, company that made drillings, subcontracted to them uh, to make uh, drillings. As far as we can tell, it's just a few hundred drillings were made by a different factory, and I'll show you what that looks like on this gun. Uh, as it turned out, uh, Jim was right. Uh, he found this uh, Walther, uh, Walther marked drilling, not Walther made. He found this Walther marked drilling, up in Wisconsin, and I bought it, and I have a couple Walther friends who will be chomping at the bit uh, to buy this. So let's take a closer look. Uh, come on in. This, of course, is the first thing that tells us it's a drilling. Now, every time I, <laughs> I say drilling, they say drilling, people get upset. It's drilling, drilling, uh, you call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it a, a drilling. Uh, three barrels, dry, eins zwei, dry, drilling, three barrels. Uh, two 16-gauge shotgun shells, and then this is 7.8-millimeter um, rifle shell, not shell, bullet. Um, and you can see the barrel. It's uh, beautiful German steel. And speaking of German steel, that's the first logo that we'll look at. Uh, this is German, a special German uh, hardened steel, uh, Prima, Krupp, and stall. Uh, we'll see that also underneath the barrel. That is a logo for the uh, German steel. I thought that might be the company, but they, they just use, that's the logo for the steel or the barrel itself. You can see it has the mounts for a scope. And if you look at the one that was uh, sold on Rock Island, again, I could not find more than one on the internet. So it's, I'm sure there are more out there and I'll get comments. I, I, I want your comments. Uh, please let me know if you know of others or if you have other information about this rare gun. Uh, but they, they had, uh, that one has a scope. This one is mounted for a scope. So my guess is they all were made to be scoped uh, for at least the uh, rifle part. So it was obviously uh, made for hunters. Here is the uh, Walther name and Gewehr Fabrik, Rifle Factory, Walther Rifle Factory. Now the first letter Looks like an E, but I think it's meant to be an F. And the reason is they stamped the marking in there and it was a box. So the letter was in a box. It looks like the bottom of the box and the F came together to look like an E. I could be wrong, please let me know, but Fritz Walther makes more sense. Um, if you have other information, let me know. But this is Walther marked, subcontracted to Gewehr Fabrik in Heidersbach, Seoul. 
Heidersbach, for, if I look on the map, Heidersbach is in the Turgen Forest. Uh, very, it's a fairly rural area, but uh, they, did, they did make these, uh, they made shotguns and drillings at this factory, and while they're subcontracted, it's not very far from Turgen, uh, Zellamelis, so it makes sense that they would subcontract to them. Heidersbach later was incorporated into the district of Seoul in 1979, so they're very close in the district of Seoul. Uh, by the way, that Seoul is also where uh, uh, sours were made and uh, Krigoffs were made. So it's a, a town with a lot of uh, weapons industry in it. Let's keep looking at this. This would be case hardened. Most of it is gone. You can see it's engraved, beautifully engraved. And it reminds me a lot of the sour drilling, the uh, M30 sour drilling and, and the way it operates. This looks like the sour drilling this does. Uh, but let's keep going with the uh, case hardening under here, case hardening, little bit of uh, checkering and light engraving here, nothing really too special. This also looks like a lot like the sour, the cheek pad looks a, little, a lot like the sour, just a little bit smaller. Here's uh, one thing that's unique, you can see the butt plate is made out of horn because uh, you can see that the bores uh, put holes in it. So probably it was resting on the floor like this and boars came up and eat the, uh, ate the horn. So the, there's uh, holes in it. Uh, other side you can see a little bit of checkering here. Uh, but overall this is, this is a bit worn. I don't think it was sanded down but this checkering is a little more worn than here but that just makes sense because that's the way you would hold it. To uh, load the weapon, you just pull that lever just like the sour, and there's your three barrels. Uh, when it's cocked, when it's loaded, uh, one of the features that I mentioned before that I like a lot, you do one barrel with this trigger, second barrel, but how do you shoot the, the rifle part? Well, once you put the sight up, remember if you, if you saw my video where I did the sour, I Pop this forward, and that pops up the sight. Randy will watch that rear sight. I push it down. <laughs> it needs a little oil. Push it back up. When you push the sight up, then the rifle will fire. And, and then you just have to reload it and do it again. Let's take the hand guard off. Very simple. Uh, you see engraving here, but push that up, and it pops right out. There's a serial number in here as well. Let's continue taking this down. All I do is push the lever and it pops right off. Pretty simple. So let's look under the barrel. There again is that marking. I see stall. I see Krupp. And uh, it's also marked over here under the barrel. Same thing. Uh, there's a lot of proof marks under here, uh, including I don't know how much Randy will get them, but there are Crown S, Crown U. There's also a Crown W over here. I see 16 in a couple places, uh, and that would be the gauge for the shotgun. I believe that's a 16 over here. Again, there's a lot of proof. There's the serial number here, um, but it has 8.8 uh, .8 millimeter. Now earlier in the video I said 7.8 and you know why I said that? Because that one, <laughs> that one on the Rock Island uh, auction, they said that the rifle is 7.8 so I believed them. But because that says 8.8 .8 millimeter, I'm going to go with 8.8 .8 millimeter uh, and that uh, there's a typo in the previous ad. And again that's from like about five years ago. Here's also important information, the date, 1227 which means December of 1927. And that fits right into the time that they contracted with this factory in Seoul to make drillings. And again, I believe they only made a few hundred. You also see a nitro proof. A little bit of very basic engraving here on the end of the barrel. Uh, nothing very ornate. I think there's a little bit of more information here, well, basically, there's the serial number here again. 
another crowned you. And uh, there's several of these eagles. They actually remind me of a Weimar uh, eagle because this was the Weimar period. But you see that eagle there. Um, also, I see police eagles that look like that. Here's the eagles here as well. So from the Weimar period, we have all kinds of proof marks. So uh, well marked, well documented as to where it came from, but uh, contracted by Walder. And I guess they weren't real successful or, or the, else there wasn't a really big demand because uh, they didn't make very many of them at all. And I never heard of them. Well, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but in this case, learn something new. I hope you learn something as well. I want to remind you that we will be at the show of shows in February 24th, 25th. It's open to the public on Friday and Saturday. We get there Thursday uh, for dealers only, I believe, but it's open to the public Friday and Saturday. Friday night, we're having a legacy party. Stay tuned for more details, but make sure you get your hotel room. If you're gonna be in the area and you can stay over Friday night, come by. We're gonna be at the Hilton Garden, which actually borders the property of the convention center, so it's easy to find. Uh, we'll be sending you more details. Uh, we will have an RSVP. I hope you can join us this year. Come by, we're gonna have a lot of fun.